This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmuth. Last week, News 6 hosted the final debate between the candidates for Orange County Sheriff. Investigator Mike Holfeld and I moderated, and at times it got heated. So this morning, we are picking out some of the key topics discussed. So on Tuesday, you're ready to vote for who you think should be the county's top cop. John Mina, Daryl Shepard, or Joe Lopez. Gentlemen, it seems every morning we wake up to reports of shootings, leaving people hurt or even worse. With the wave of violence on a national scale, especially that we've seen over the last two weeks or so, what plans will you implement to protect the streets of Orange County? Mr. Mina, we'll begin with you. So I have a lot of experience uh, being the chief of the largest police department in Central Florida. Uh, my plan is uh, three prongs, proactive policing, uh, engaging with our community like I've done for the past four and a half years, and also a collaborative effort with the community. It's going to take all of us, 1.3, 1.4 million residents of Orange County, plus all of our visitors, to help us uh, fight the crime in the areas. And that starts with engaging with our community, building trust like I have been doing for the past five years with our community so they, will, they feel comfortable coming forward to us and telling us who's committing the crimes, where the crimes are being committed, and that has worked in the city of Orlando. Mr. Shepard? Uh, well, I plan on bringing back accountability. I think in order for you to maintain public safety, uh, you have to have trust. Uh, right now, we don't have any trust uh, within our law enforcement community uh, when it comes to citizens, especially those in the minority community. So I want to start there by bringing back accountability or, or in enhancing our accountability, making sure the citizens are involved in law enforcement, uh, dealing with the mental health program or problem uh, in, in a lot of areas. I think that that's a, a significant issue and making sure that we're transparent. We don't have to lie to our citizens, uh, making sure that we have an open book policy when it comes to our law enforcement and the way we treat uh, the citizens that we serve. And Mr. Lopez. As I walk the community, I've been listening to the uh, community members and they telling me that the, the violent crime is going up in the city of Orlando. They had 38 murders so far in 2018 and they got 27, 25 in 2017. And yet 2018 is not over yet. That's 38 homicides. So we need to do better. So we need to have the, cr the, the correct strategies. Look at the strategies we're looking at. Uh, Evidence-led policing, intelligence-led policing, and finding out uh, what is the root cause of the crimes. Now, uh, strategies, sometimes strategies can get antiquated, so we need to reevaluate that. Get back in the community. Uh, start with the, uh, the, 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 uh, the youth inside the schools. Talk to the, to the youth. Tell them, talk to them about uh, the crime that's going out there. Educate them about the guns. Uh, get more deputies. We need more deputies on the street. That's one of my platforms. Right now, we're short on deputies, and we need more deputies on the streets. Mr. Media, you have 30 seconds if you'd like a rebuttal. Yeah, sure. Even one homicide is one homicide too many. The fact of the matter is uh, crime, and specifically homicides, are down during my four years when compared to the previous eight years. And back in 2007, uh, we had near 50 homicides. And people have to remember, homicides are a crime of rage, a crime of passion hard to predict, hard to prevent. Many of our uh, homicides are drug related. So last month and the month before we did specific drug operations where we arrested uh, nearly 30 uh, drug dealers in the area in an effort to combat that violent crime. And I want to ask all three of, the, of you this. Do you support a citizen's board to review incidents involving Orange County sheriffs? And let me put it to you this way. Should there be accountability to the people deputies protect and serve. Mr. Shepard, I'll begin with you. Uh, absolutely. I think we need a Citizens Review Board. It's absolutely uh, paramount uh, to our jobs. Uh, the other two candidates have said that uh, you can't do citi citizen review boards because uh, the Supreme Court has, has ruled that they, they can't have power. That's just not true. As a sheriff, you are uh, an extension, or your deputies are an extension of your authority. So we can give citizens the ability uh, through recommendations or however you want to set it up is up to the sheriff's office. Uh, but you can give citizens a, a, a voice uh, within their community. I think remo removing them out, out of that process Process is uh, completely reckless, and that's what you see with, with the other two candidates. They've been on record uh, saying that they don't believe in citizen review boards, and they want to break it up and, and have multiple different uh, types of race-related um, advisory boards with no teeth. They have to have teeth. Uh, what good is a board that just throws away your recommendations uh, if, if you're the leader? Joe Lopez, would you weigh yes, in on that? Yes, obviously, uh, Mr. Shep is, is, is not uh, well-educated on the whole uh, situation with the Policeman's Bill of Rights 
in the union. You have union contracts, so you have a community relations board. Uh, I come from the Florida Highway Patrol. I was the chief of internal affairs, and we held our people accountable. There's other methods, other methods that you can hold the police officers accountable. A citizen's review board is not the only way to do it. Now, the Florida Highway Patrol, we have a great record. We don't have excessive use of force, zero. It doesn't happen uh, because of the training and the discipline. One thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that when we investigate our excessive use of force, that these investigations are completed within 30 to 90 days, not 11 months. We're gonna be transparent when this investigation is completed. We're gonna conclude and we're going to share that information. And we're not gonna wait 11 months, a year. We're gonna investigate it ASAP and come to a conclusion soon. Chief Mina, would you weigh in on that for us, sir? Yeah, so what I have said in the past is I'm not for a citizen's review board. Uh, like the current format we have in the city of Orlando, there's been a lot of frustration from community members and from the citizen's review board because they really do not have true power because of the state laws, because of the officer's bill of rights. Uh, they can't impose discipline and, and they can't reopen an investigation unless there's new evidence. And so one of the things where I've been successful in utilizing our citizen's review board is to change policy. I have two specific different policies that were changed because of the recommendations of the Citizen Review Board. So what I will do as sheriff is I will form a community advisory board to advise the sheriff on several high profile cases as well as uh, changing policies and I'm going to listen to them just like I did in my Citizens Review Board. So let me get this straight. You're, you're willing to compromise and get the citizens involved but they wouldn't be the sole voice, Chief? So again, and, and this goes back to uh, the interview I had uh, many months ago where I said I didn't want a citizen review board like we have in place because there's a lot of frustration because it's become adversarial because the board feels uh, and the community feels like they have no power. So I want to have a community advisory board uh, that's more of a relationship where I can reach out to community members, not picked by me, that, can, that I can um, reach out to and have them trust and change uh, certain policies and give me recommendations based on incidents that are happening around the country and based on incidents that are happening here locally. I want you two to react on yeah. that, Mr. Lopez. Yeah, I'd like to react to that. Um, currently, the Orange County Sheriff's Office does have an advisory committee. It's defunct. It hasn't been utilized in over a year. The last time they met was a year ago. All they did was elect leadership, but they haven't addressed any issues. So what I want to do is I want to bring that back. I want to make it a robust advisory committee that needs to be reflective of the community. To talk about police issues, to talk about training issues, how we, we, get, we have to listen to the community uh, because they're the ones that are asking for this. But I can guarantee you that I am accountable. I will hold myself accountable before I can hold uh, the, the, just my subordinates accountable before I can hold the criminals accountable, I will hold myself accountable first. Mr. Shepard, we'd like you to weigh in, sir. Uh, yeah, um, you know, as Mr. Lopez pointed out uh, earlier, uh, there are other ways to do uh, accountability. Uh, unfortunately, those ways aren't working. Uh, we could be holding our officers accountable from the beginning and making sure that they're not committing uh, acts of violence against our citizens. Uh, that's just not happening. Uh, Mina pointed out at, a la at another debate and, and at this one uh, that, you know, the community review boards are adversarial. They're adversarial because they're not getting listened to. Uh, they're adversarial because, you know, the things that they want done in the community, such as, you know, the Shellhorn incident and others, uh, are just not being listened to. And you don't have to wait. As sheriff, you, you can create other ways. You are the chief executive or, or chief law enforcement officer in the county. Uh, you can make a decision well before waiting 80, 90, 200 days. If you know something as it comes out immediately, uh, you should be able to review that and make a decision and move on. You don't need to wait for the advisory board. That's just there to assist. And after the break, we'll have more from last week's Orange County Sheriff's debate, including each of the candidates' final message to voters. Keep it here. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. This morning, we are continuing to show you some of the best moments from the final debate between the candidates for Orange County Sheriff. Enjoy. Well, let's now talk about school safety. Uh, starting with Mr. Lopez, do you support arming teachers as a layer of protection in our public schools? And if not, what would you do to step up security in public schools? No, teachers should not be armed. Oh. The, uh, the first thing we need to do is to make sure we got sufficient SROs, school resource officers in the school. Sometimes they need more than one, maybe even two. But that's not the only solution. We need to work with the school's district to make sure that they can harden the schools and get the funding for it and give the training. Uh, you have a guardian program where you can get uh, retired uh, military 
I'm sorry, retired uh, law enforcement or former military uh, who can come in there as a guardian and get the 132 hours. There's a lot of things that we can do by working with the school. $62 million was not enough when they signed the bill, when Governor Scott signed the bill, uh, the Stoneman Douglas Act, so we need to get more funding. We've got to work with the federal government and make sure we can get some um, uh, um, uh, grant funds so we can get more uh, protection in the schools. Hardening the schools is one aspect of it, but it's a, it's a very complicated situation. It's very personal to me. My wife works in the school. My kids went to the school. And now I worried every time they leave the house that whether they're going to come back for 28 years, they were worried when I left the house. Now that role has reversed. Mr. Mina? So I was one of the very few chiefs that was called up to Tallahassee to give the governor recommendations from law enforcement on the new school safety bill. One of the things that I recommended was having a deputy or officer in every single school. The good news is in Orange County, we already had two SROs or school resource officers in every single school, one in, one in every single middle school, two in every high school. The gap was the elementary schools. As chief in the city of Orlando, I have committed to filling all of those elementary schools, and now we have an officer in every single school, so I'm not for Army teachers. They have a bigger responsibility of educating our students, so we, had, we need to ensure we have enough students or enough officers in our schools protecting our students, and we need to use things like the new Fortify Florida app that FDLE has come up with in a way so students and teachers can let law enforcement know immediately that there is a threat of violence, and by that using that app, it's followed up immediately so the tragedies like Parkland never happen again. And Mr. Shepard, where do you stand on arming uh, teachers? I do not agree with uh, arming uh, teachers. I believe that we have so many other options. Uh, bringing more guns into the school is just uh, not appropriate, and I think it's a liability. I do believe in hardening schools, uh, making sure our sites are uh, safe for students. I know when I went to high school, and I'm not as old as uh, these other two candidates, I'm the youngest one here, um, and would be the youngest sheriff uh, elected in Orange County. Uh, when I went to school, we had search policies, and those search policies are not being enforced as fully as they should be. Uh, we, sh we should also put some metal detectors in school. I think parents, uh, and this is not to make our schools feel like a jail, there's so many decorative items that we can do uh, when it comes to that, you know, the technology and everything else, whether you make it look like a tree and make it incorporate into the environment, uh, but you have to do something to screen the students in the school. You can't just deal with people outside of school. The school shootings have been mostly other peers and other things uh, or, or other people inside the school. So I, I think we have to make sure to look at that and uh, not just think we can harden the outside and that's, that's going to work. Let's talk about accountability. Will you expand the use of body cams for all deputies? Chief Mean, I'll go with you first. Yeah, so the good news is that the Orange County Sheriff's Office already has a body-worn camera in place, and all the, all the deputies out on the streets in uniform have the body-worn cameras. I was one of the first chiefs uh, in this area to start testing body-worn cameras as soon as I became chief, and it shows transparency, it shows accountability, it shows us what happened in use of force cases and police officer involved shooting. So all four of the body worn cameras. We've even had citizens come in and complain on officers and after reviewing the body worn camera found out it didn't exactly happen that way. So but it does. It holds the officers accountable and also holds our citizens accountable. All four of the body worn cameras and I think it's really been a good thing for our community. Mr. Lopez? Yes. Um yes I do agree that everyone should have body uh, worn uh cameras. We had it, uh, the cameras inside the cars and the vehicles at the Florida Highway Patrol. It does wonders. Uh, it uh, keeps people honest. Uh, there's transparency. And then also there's uh, false accus accusations when the, the complaint comes in and we can go to the body camera. It, it's what the community has now accepted. Uh, I believe it brings uh, not only honesty, integrity, but it also brings that credibility in bridging that gap between the community and uh, law enforcement. I have zero tolerance if body cameras are turned off. Uh, I do at zero tolerance. And we gotta make sure that the cameras are working properly, including the batteries, to make sure they're working all the time. And if they're not, we need to get replacements. Mr. Shepard? Yes, I, uh, as sheriff, would be 100% uh, making sure that we enforce our body cam uh, policies. Uh, I don't believe that there should be any time where an officer is dealing with a citizen and we don't have the cameras on. It would be unacceptable for this whole idea of the cameras falling off, they're not working. Uh, that just would not be tolerated for me as sheriff. So what we'd like to do is have final comments, your argument, if you will, to vote for you to our audience right now, and I'll begin with Joe Lopez. I've been walking the community for the last 275 days, talking, knocking on doors, and what I find is that the community is energized. They want change. They're tired of the politics. 
They're tired of the politicians. They're tired of the, of the, uh, the establishment. They want somebody who's going to be transparent. They want somebody who's not going to mislead the community. They want somebody who's not going to mislead the media. I am a person of diversity. I was born and raised in the Bronx. I lived in Miami. Now I'm here in Orlando, a community of diversity. I want to bring the community together. I am the only one. I am the only candidate that has been walking in the community, knocking on doors, going to events, doing a listening tour, looking in people's eyes and faces and listening to them, what the needs are. You will never see any transparency or any truth and integrity what I'm going to bring. When you vote for Joe Lopez, you're voting for integrity, loyalty, and effective leadership. Integrity, it's all about accountability and ethics. You either got it or you don't. You can't buy it. Thank you. Mr. Shepard? Uh, yes, I am uh, the only candidate in this race uh, that does not have as much law enforcement experience at the other two, as the other two. But I do have a law enforcement background that they continue to try to bulldoze over as if it doesn't exist. I also have a significant educational background, graduated from one of the uh, greatest historically black colleges and university, FAMU. Uh, and, so, and I've also been in business uh, for the last 15 years. I'm the only one up here that has created jobs and not just been in the private sector or uh, public sector, and I believe that it's time for a change. You know, these guys flip-flop on so many things. They even flip-flop with their party. Uh, they started out deceiving the voters to make them think that they're Democrats. Then in this debate, you hear that they say that it shouldn't even be about party. Well, if it wasn't about party for them, they should have stayed in the one that they're most li aligned with when it comes to their values. Uh, as sheriff, I want to make sure that we don't have the status quo. Uh, we reduce crime by 30 percent by not, you know, continuing this minor arrest for drugs and other things that could be allocated to mental health treatment. I want to make sure that we do not continue uh, the same kind of policies that has failed us for the entire time that they've been in office. Chief Mina, your final message to the viewers tonight. Uh, I have been a resident of Orange County for 28 years. I care deeply about the safety of this community. This is where I chose to raise my family. All of you, the voters of Orange County, will have to decide, well, what separates me from the other candidates? And I will tell you, there's a huge separation, and you heard it here tonight, in police executive leadership experience. I'm the only candidate uh, who's a resident of Orange County for 28 years. I'm the only candidate who's been chief of the largest police department in Central Florida. It's the fourth largest in the entire state of Florida. I command 1,000 personnel. I'm in charge of a $146 million budget. I have widespread support throughout this community. I have led this community through crisis. And the reason I have all that support is because I have been fighting crime and building relationships in this community for 28 years. That's 10,000 days that I've been walking in this community. I'm endorsed by all 12 mayors, Republican and Democrat, to include Teresa Jacobs and Buddy Dyer and the current sheriff, who's our mayor-elect, Jerry Damon. I'm the only one who's been tested and trusted and is ready to be the next Orange County Sheriff. Vote for John Mina. And if you'd like to watch the debate in full, as well as read up on the candidates and their backgrounds, just head to clickorlando.com weekly. I'm Justin Mormuth. Have a great Sunday and don't forget to vote.